Making big sci-fi stuff in Blender can be quite intimidating at first. But trust me, if you're willing to use some quick and dirty tricks, it can be surprisingly fast and easy. Take this one for example. I modeled the whole thing in about 20 minutes, and rendering took me like 10 minutes. On a crappy notebook. So if I can do it, you can do it too. Now it all comes down to two key elements. The level of detail and the overall shape. Think about this before, and I cannot stress this enough before you even open Blender, because shapes have meaning. Triangles symbolize strength and power, while rectangles stand for balance and stability. Curved objects imply positivity and movement, and circular shapes convey a feeling of friendliness and unity. At least, that's what Google says. But I know you clicked on this video because you love details. Lots and lots and lots of details. And I think there are two common ways to add all those details very quickly. The first one is called kit bashing. Basically, you have a bunch of pre-made greebles that you can drag and drop onto your mesh. You either make those greebles yourself, which can be fun but is also a lot of work, or you can benefit from the time and effort of others and use pre-made greeble packs. Most of them are fairly cheap and offer a huge variety of different shapes and sizes. And some of them are even free. I've linked a few of those packs in the description down below. The downside of this method is detailing bigger models can take a lot of time. And this is where the second method comes in handy. Displacement. The idea is simple. You create a mesh, you subdivide it, add even more geometry with a subdivision surface modifier and you displace it using an image texture. And for that I love using the free software JS Placement. Even though the original website seems to be offline, you can still find the download links on the website of the Internet Archive. There also is a web version of the software. In short, JS Placement allows you to more or less randomly generate displacement maps of sci-fi panels, blocks, electric circuits, wires or even window textures. You are allowed to use the generated images in commercial products, but sadly I am not allowed to share the raw textures with you. In Blender, subdivide your mesh and add a subdivide modifier set to simple. At this stage I recommend you turn on statistics to keep an eye on your model's poly count. For most surfaces, 1 million faces are more than enough. Keep in mind that you can always decimate your mesh after displacing it if you want to reduce the number of faces. Add a displacement modifier and click on new, texture. Import the displacement map that you like and set the coordinates to UV. And, and that's important, check the edit mode icon. This way you can see your final result while adjusting the UVs in the UV editor. The mesh is only one part of the game. Adding realistic textures is just as important. Luckily this process is fairly forgiving. I like to use rusty metal textures to add that used and grungy look, but concrete textures work just as well. To judge how the material is going to look like in the final render, I'm going to import an HDRI I got from ProductionCrate.com. Besides their paid option, they also offer a ton of free and high quality stuff. Back in the shader editor, I fed the image texture through a color ramp to control the level of roughness. I also wanted to color a few of my panels in red paint. A mixed color node set to multiply can do exactly that. To control the amount of paint on your model, you can use the original displacement texture and adjust it with a color ramp. Since the displacement modifier uses the UV coordinates of your mesh, the paint mask will follow the displacement. The cool thing about this method is that it is fully procedural. You can always edit your mesh and unwrap it however you like. With all that in mind, let's model a space station. I started by adding a cylinder. I inserted the top and bottom faces and then hit right click bridge faces. From there on it was a process of adding edge loops, extruding faces, adding more loops, extruding more faces and a little bit of beveling. Since I didn't want to apply the displacement to the entire station I selected the inner loop and hit P separate by selection. I added the sub D and displacement modifier and used UV unwrapping to scale the panels to my liking. For the textures I used the exact same method from earlier, but this time I used two different materials. One that contains the red panels and one that doesn't. To add more life and a sense of scale to the station I decided to add windows. For that I extruded an edge loop of the original cylinder. I added a mixed shader node to mix between an emission and a transparent shader. For the factor that controls which parts of the mesh are transparent and which parts are emissive, I used an image texture that I also generated using JS Placement. Since the overall shape of the station wasn't interesting enough yet, I added more details using the exact same method. Then I duplicated the entire ring to give the station more depth. 
Just because I used the displacement method earlier doesn't mean I can't use individual agree balls as well. So I added a few models from a pack I bought earlier. To break off the straight silhouette, I used antennas and what looks like railing parts. If it's a personal project like this one and it doesn't have to make sense, just do whatever feels right. And essentially, that was it. Just remember, just because you can use displacement to add details, doesn't mean you have to use displacement. And it most certainly does not mean to just cover everything in greebles. The key is to use it in some places to make the viewer think you spend a lot of time fine-tuning the details. Covering your entire models in details does the exact opposite. So if you want to learn more about quick and easy ways to add details in Blender, make sure to watch this video next.